Hello everyone, it's Rebecca with a Bible art journaling challenge. I had so much fun using Brusho this week. I'm going to show you a Brusho technique with masks. This is super messy and a lot of fun, but firstly I want to show you what Brusho is. It's a watercolor crystal essentially. It comes in a powder pigment type form and essentially you definitely do not want to open the caps of your little bottles when you get them. You basically just pick up a little pin of some sort and just put little pins in your lids and then you can just shake them out like a shaker on anything that's wet it will do these really great things I'm going to have a collection of these over on my blog today so you can actually look at the exact colors and then also I'm going to be using some stuff from his kingdom come their faith art product line they have some great products they've sent me some things which was really sweet of them and this is a thermofax screen and there's some stencils and stamps and masks I have used that in the past. You can see there the stamp that I used and these are some other ones. And I'm just having a lot of fun with these. And there you can see some brusho that I used to make that page there. I'm not sure about the bird, but I do love the background. And uh, these are both personal ones that I did that you wouldn't see a tutorial for, but I wanted to show you the personal work that I did there. So firstly, I prepped my page with my favorite thing, which was Art Basics Co Gesso. There's lots of options out there. This is definitely my favorite one, and I am working hard to see what we can do to get it available for people. So make sure that you get yourself a good, solid uh, amount of prep on your page for Brusho. And then as you can see, I used my other Bible to prop up my page to try and make it as flat as possible when it was laying there. And then I used these sheets, the clear, or sorry, the craft sheets underneath one page and then over the other one. And the reason I've done this is because here's a sample of what I'm doing here. I'm going to shake it on here and it's going to get really wet, which is basically going to make a mess. And I knew that this was going to happen, but... Um, in preparation for it, I actually prepared my page with three layers of gesso. I never do that. I always do two layers and I did three just to be certain that I definitely took care of every last bit of ability for this brush out to leak through. And I've gone ahead and gotten this really fun mask that comes with the, uh, set that you saw me use. I think it was in week four. I'll go ahead and link to it over my page so you can go and have a look at where I use the piano keys. And this staff comes with it. This is some post-it tape and I am going over the edges. I do expect the brusho to make a mess and kind of leak under some of the edges, which will be fun, but it'll kind of frame some of it and it will improve the ability for the brusho to not just run straight off the page and back onto the back side of my page. So I'm trying to prevent some of the leakage, but it will definitely get some and I expect that. So this is a messy thing. If you like to be a perfectionist and you're trying to break out of that mold, this is the, <laughs> this is the challenge for you. This is really messy, but it's super fun. So I know I'm sure I've said that at least three or four or 20 times by now, and we're only a few minutes in, but it's about to get crazy here. So stick with me and just enjoy this. Make sure that when you put your mask down, don't make her look like she's gonna fall backwards or forward. Make sure her arm is just straight up and down with her body and then she will be actually worshipping while she's kneeling rather than falling over backwards or something like that. So spray this straight down. Don't do it at an angle or you'll get it underneath your masks. And a mask is just the negative version of your stencil. So it is these plastic pieces rather than the holes. And I could have used the opposite and just sprayed the shape of these by using the stencil version, which comes with both of these. But I chose to do it this way. So what I'm doing is I'm, I got it damp and then I shook some on and then wherever it's not really moving, I spray it a little bit more. 
And normally I would say definitely don't get your bubble page this wet, but I put three layers of gesso on and I would definitely recommend at least that. I wanted to show you this still shot here of how much water is really on there with this brush -o. This is beautiful. I really like how this is turning out and I enjoyed it, but you can see it leaking under the post-it and kind of pooling in different places. It's pooling in the edge of my binding tons and that's okay with me. If you like things to be t neat and tidy, then just do a section that you get wet and don't do the whole page. But I'm doing the whole page. I'm just going to be brave. And I had a lot of fun with it. And I love how this turned out. So I expected it to leak underneath my different masks because I got them wet. But as I lift them up gently, it'll get rid of some of it like you saw there. And I'll do it with the treble clef here. I'm just rolling the paper towel, as you can see, right over the top of it as I do it. And that just keeps everything from moving around. And there's a little section there that I didn't like, so I just added a bit extra water to it, that sort of thing. So this is pretty good. Now I need to very gently pull that out and you can see how wet it got and all of that. And there, that is not um, as bad as I expected it might get, but it is still pretty wild. and. The camera really is showing the green a little bit differently than it actually is in real life. I do have some photos so you can see what it looks like. But I just wanted to show this to you. And it really, um, this is Psalm 145, if I haven't said that yet. I'm still trying to get back into the swing of things. I'm still feeling a bit rough, but I'm getting there. So I'm just giving this big dry. And this is Psalm 145, which is a song of praise of David. And I really like the whole chapter. This is about the whole chapter this week, but I am going to focus in on verse two and three here. It says, every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. I want to encourage you to go and look at my blog where I'll talk to you a bit about what this means. But ultimately, this is a chapter that really talks to people about well, David was just saying, look, no matter what happens in life, I'm going to praise you. And I think that all of us go through difficult situations where we have to say, okay, you know, this is difficult. I don't really like how life is turning out right now, but I trust you, God, and I am going to praise you even when it's difficult. I'm going to put my the praise on my lips of who you are and how wonderful you are. So that's what this chapter is about. It's something that was really marked my mom's life was being someone who praised God in all circumstances. And I really want to model my life after that and be a person who does the same. So here is just really simple. I just took that Faber-Castell pen and went over around the edges of the girl because I wanted her to stick out and I made the mistake just there of putting the mask back down to make it look like she was holding that uh, musical note but that was wrong actually because that's her right hand so it would actually be showing so I'll fix that in a moment and basically I just put some musical notes on there. I've got all of these products links over on my blog so you can have a look at them. And of course, all of the different brush out colors. This is just the beginning of things that you can do with brush out. It is so much fun. Basically, anywhere it gets wet, you can see it swimming around and doing beautiful things and it kind of models around. But you can actually just shake it out onto a non-porous surface like a piece of plastic or craft sheet, something like that. And then use it like watercolor, just get it wet and then you've got yourself a watercolor. So it kind of, I think is a great solution for people who don't have a lot of money for watercolor, but want some nice watercolor. You could get these and use them as both watercolor and as this awesome kind of the thing that you can shake around and do cool things with. So interesting options. I love watercolor and have a lot of different types of it. And this is definitely one of those things that's worth investing in, I suppose. It's super fun. And I wanted to show you it and I do want to encourage you to be careful that you don't get this everywhere and mask everything off good and make sure that you enjoy. I mean, see how messy my fingers are. Just make sure that you really 
prep your page more than you would normally, like I did three times here. And here you can even see that it still leaked through. I counted 12 pages back that the binding still had some, some good leakage, but I love that. I think it's super fun. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you will come and try out Brusho or use this technique or use any techniques. Just get in the word and I hope to see you really soon over my blog. And if you hadn't noticed recently, my blog was recently completely redone and it's totally mobile responsive, which is brilliant. And you can search everything much easier now. So do have a check out of that and join me on Patreon if you want. Lots of fun stuff there too if you want to uh, be able to see sneak peeks of what I'm doing and interact with me and lots of other things. So I love you guys and really appreciate you spending some time with me each week and hope to see you again very soon.